The Association of Southeast Asian Nations is a regional intergovernmental organization comprising ten Southeast Asian countries, which promotes intergovernmental cooperation and facilitates economic, political, security, military, educational, and socio-cultural integration among its members and other Asian states. It also regularly engages other states in the Asia-Pacific region and beyond. Being a global powerhouse, the Central Union for Cooperation in Asia-Pacific, and one of the world's most prominent and influential organizations, ASEAN maintains a global network of alliances and dialogue partners. It is involved in numerous international affairs, and hosts diplomatic missions throughout the world. It is a major partner of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization developing cooperation model with the Organization for the Peace, Stability, Development and Sustainability of the Asian Continent. It also serves as an international role model in seeking harmony and strength among diversity and differences, as well as a leading figure in global economy, trade, diplomacy and politics. History Founding ASEAN was preceded by an organization formed in 31 July 1961 called the Association of Southeast Asia a group consisting of the Philippines, Federation of Malaya, and Thailand. ASEAN itself was created on 8 August 1967, when the foreign ministers of five countries Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand, signed the ASEAN Declaration. As set out in the Declaration, the aims and purposes of ASEAN are to accelerate economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the region, to promote regional peace, collaboration and mutual assistance on matters of common interest, to provide assistance to each other in the form of training and research facilities, to collaborate for better utilization of agriculture and industry to raise the living standards of the people, to promote Southeast Asian studies and to maintain close, beneficial cooperation with existing international organizations with similar Similar aims and purposes. The creation of ASEAN was motivated by a common fear of communism. ASEAN achieved greater cohesion in the mid 1970s following a change in balance of power after the end of the Vietnam War in 1975. The region's dynamic economic growth during the 1970s strengthened the organization, enabling ASEAN to adopt a unified response to Vietnam's invasion of Cambodia in 1979. ASEAN's first summit meeting, held in Bali, Indonesia in 1976, resulted in an agreement on several industrial projects and the signing of a Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, and a Declaration of Concord. The end of the Cold War between the West and the Soviet Union at the end of the 1980s allowed ASEAN countries to exercise greater political independence in the region, and in the 1990s ASEAN emerged as a leading voice on regional trade and security issues. Expansion In 1984, Brunei became ASEAN's sixth member and on 28 July 1995, Vietnam joined as the seventh member. Laos and Myanmar Burma joined two years later on 23 July 1997. Cambodia was to have joined at the same time as Laos and Burma, but its entry was delayed due to the country's internal political struggle. It later joined on 30 April 1999, following the stabilization of its government. <laughs> Nascent economic cooperation In 1990, Malaysia proposed the creation of an East Asia Economic Caucus composed of the members of ASEAN as well as China, Japan, and South Korea, with the intention of counterbalancing the growing U.S. influence in Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation and in Asia as a whole. However, the proposal failed because of heavy opposition from the U.S. and Japan. Work for further integration continued, and the ASEAN Plus Three, consisting of ASEAN, China, Japan and South Korea, was created in 1997. In 1992, the Common Effective Preferential Tariff scheme was adopted as a schedule for phasing out tariffs with the goal to increase the "...region's competitive advantage as a production base geared for the world market." This law would act as the framework for the ASEAN Free Trade Area which is an agreement by member states concerning local manufacturing in ASEAN. 
It was signed on 28 January 1992 in Singapore. After the 1997 Asian financial crisis, a revival of the Malaysian proposal, known as the Chiang Mai Initiative, was put forward in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It called for better integration of the economies of ASEAN as well as the ASEAN Plus Three. Topic: Nuclear Free ASEAN. The bloc also focused on peace and stability in the region. On the 15th of December 1995, the Southeast Asian Nuclear Weapon Free Zone Treaty was signed with the intention of turning Southeast Asia into a nuclear weapon free zone. The treaty took effect on 28 March 1997 after all but one of the member states had ratified it. It became fully effective on 21 June 2001 after the Philippines ratified it, effectively banning all nuclear weapons in the region. The ASEAN Charter On 15 December 2008, member states met in Jakarta to launch a charter, signed in November 2007, with the aim of moving closer to an EU-style community. The charter turned ASEAN into a legal entity and aimed to create a single free trade area for the region encompassing 500 million people. President of Indonesia Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono stated, this is a momentous development when ASEAN is consolidating, integrating, and transforming itself into a community. It is achieved while ASEAN seeks a more vigorous role in Asian and global affairs at a time when the international system is experiencing a seismic shift." Referring to climate change and economic upheaval, he concluded, "...Southeast Asia is no longer the bitterly divided, war-torn region it was in the 1960s and 1970s." The financial crisis of 2007–2008 was seen as a threat to the goals envisioned by the Charter, and also set forth the idea of a proposed human rights body to be discussed at a future summit in February 2009. This proposition caused controversy, as the body would not have the power to impose sanctions or punish countries which violated citizens' rights and would therefore be limited in effectiveness. The body was established later in 2009 as the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights In November 2012, the Commission adopted the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration. The ASEAN Way The ASEAN Way refers to a methodology or approach to solving issues that respects the cultural norms of Southeast Asia. Masilamani and Peterson summarize it as, "...a working process or style that is informal and personal. Policymakers constantly utilize compromise, consensus, and consultation in the informal decision-making process it above all prioritizes a consensus-based, non-conflictual way of addressing problems." Quiet diplomacy allows ASEAN leaders to communicate without bringing the discussions into the public view. Members avoid embarrassment that may lead to further conflict. It has been said that the merits of the ASEAN Way might be usefully applied to global conflict management. However, critics have argued that such an approach can be only applied to Asian countries to specific cultural norms and understandings, notably due to a difference in mindset and level of tension. Critics object claiming that the ASEAN Way's emphasis on consultation, consensus, and non-interference, forces the organization to adopt only those policies which satisfy the lowest common denominator. Decision-making by consensus requires members to see eye to eye before ASEAN can move forward on an issue. Members may not have a common conception of the meaning of the ASEAN Way. Myanmar, Cambodia, and Laos emphasize non-interference while older member countries focus on cooperation and coordination. These differences hinder efforts to find common solutions to particular issues, but also make it difficult to determine when collective action is appropriate in a given situation. ASEAN Plus Three was the first of attempts for further integration to improve existing ties with China, Japan, and South Korea. This was followed by the even larger East Asia Summit which included ASEAN Plus Three as well as India, Australia, and New Zealand. This group acted as a prerequisite for the planned East Asia community which was supposedly patterned after the now defunct European community. 
The ASEAN Eminent Persons Group was created to study the possible successes and failures of this policy. In 2006, ASEAN was given observer status at the United Nations General Assembly. In response, the organization awarded the status of dialogue partner. To the UN, the group became ASEAN Plus Six with Australia, New Zealand and India, and stands as the linchpin of Asia-Pacific's economic, political, security, socio-cultural architecture, as well as the global economy. Codification of the relations between these countries has seen progress through the development of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, a proposed free trade agreement involving the 16 countries of ASEAN Plus Six. RCEP would, in part, allow the members to protect local sectors and give more time to comply with the aim for developed country members. Structure ASEAN Community 2015 Beginning in 1997, heads of each member state adopted the ASEAN Vision 2020 during ASEAN's 30th anniversary meeting held in Kuala Lumpur. This vision, as a means for the realization of a single ASEAN community, sees Southeast Asia becoming a group of countries which are outward looking, living in peace, stability, and prosperity. Included in ASEAN Vision 2020 were provisions on, peace and stability, being nuclear-free, closer economic integration, human development, sustainable development, cultural heritage, being drug-free, environment, among others. The vision also aimed to, "...see an outward-looking ASEAN playing a pivotal role in the international fora, and advancing ASEAN's common interests." Such vision was formalized and made comprehensive through the Bali Concord II in 2003. Three major pillars of a single ASEAN community were originally established, security community, economic community and socio-cultural community. The ASEAN community, initially planned to commence by 2020, was accelerated to begin by 31 December 2015. This was decided during the 12th ASEAN Summit in Cebu in 2007. To fully embody the three Bali Concord II pillars as part of the 2015 integration, Blueprints for ASEAN Political Security Community and ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community were subsequently adopted in 2009 in Chaiam, Thailand. At the 23rd ASEAN Summit in November 2013, ASEAN leaders made the decision to develop a post-2015 vision and thus created the High Level Task Force which consists of ten high-level representatives from all member member states. The vision was adopted at the 27th ASEAN Summit in November 2015 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The ASEAN community revises and renews its vision every ten years to provide a framework for continuous development and further integration of the community. The terms in the vision are divided into mainly four sub-categories, ASEAN Political Security Community, ASEAN Economic Community, ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community, and Moving Forward. ASEAN political security issues are covered under Article 7 and 8 of the vision. Article 7 generally states the overall aspiration of the community aiming to achieve a united, inclusive and resilient community. It also puts human and environmental security at the center of its aspirations. Deepening engagement with both internal members and eternal parties are also stressed to contribute the international peace, security and stability. The final part of the vision, under Oving Forward. Subcategory implies the acknowledgement of the weakness of the institution capacity to process and coordinate ASEAN work. Strengthening ASEAN Secretariat and other ASEAN organs and bodies is desired. There is also a call for greater level of ASEAN institutional presence at the national, regional and international levels. Topic: <laughs> Economic Community Blueprint The ASEAN Economic Community AEC aims to implement economic integration initiatives to create a single market across ASEAN member states. On the 20th of November 2007, during the 13th ASEAN Summit in Singapore, its blueprint, which serves as a master plan guiding the establishment of the community, was adopted. Its characteristics include a single market and production base, a highly competitive economic region, a region of fair economic development, and a region fully integrated into the global economy. 
The areas of cooperation include human resources development, recognition of professional qualifications, closer consultation on macroeconomic and financial policies, trade financing measures, enhanced infrastructure and communications connectivity, development of electronic transactions through EASEAN, integrating industries across the region to promote regional sourcing, and enhancing private sector involvement. Through the free movement of skilled labor, goods, services and investment, ASEAN will rise globally as one market with each member gaining from each other's strengths, thus increasing its competitiveness and opportunities for development. The AEC is the embodiment of the ASEAN's vision of a stable, prosperous and highly competitive ASEAN economic region in which there is a free flow of goods, services, investment and a freer flow of capital, equitable economic development and reduced poverty and socio-economic disparities." The formulation The Blueprint established the member states' commitment to a common goal as well as ensuring compliance with stated objectives and timelines. The blueprint also lays out the overall vision as well as the goals, implementing plans and strategies actions, as well as the strategic schedule timeline for achieving the establishment of the AEC by N2015. 2020 ASEAN Banking Integration Framework As trade is liberalized with the ASEAN Economic Integration in 2015, the need arises for ASEAN banking institutions to accommodate and expand their services to a greater intra-ASEAN market. While the financial integration is not going to take effect until 2020, experts from the financial services industry have already forecast a shaky economic transition, especially for smaller players in the banking and financial services industry. Two separate reports by Standard & Poor's, ASEAN Financial Integration, The Long Road to Bank Consolidation and the Philippines Banking System, The Good, the Bad and the Ambivalent, outline the challenges ASEAN financial institutions are facing as they prepare for the 2020 banking integration. The Philippines, with its overcrowded banking sector, for example, is among the ASEAN member countries who are forecast to feel the most pressure as the integration welcomes tighter competition with the entry of bigger, more established foreign banks. To lessen the impact of this consolidation, countries with banking sectors considered smaller by global standards must expand regionally. S&P in a follow-up report recently cited the Philippines for «shoring up its network bases and building up capital ahead of the banking integration, playing defense and strengthening their domestic networks». <laughs> Roadmap for financial integration The roadmap for the integration of ASEAN in finance is the latest regional initiative, which aims to strengthen regional self-help and support mechanisms. The implementation of the roadmap will contribute to the realization of the AEC that was launched in October 2003 in Bali. As in the EU, adoption of a common currency, when conditions are ripe, could be the final stage of the AEC. Under the roadmap, approaches and milestones have been identified in areas deemed crucial to financial and monetary integration, namely capital market development, capital account liberalization, financial services liberalization, and ASEAN currency cooperation. Capital market development entails promoting institutional capacity, including the legal and regulatory framework, as well as the facilitation of greater cross-border collaboration, linkages, and harmonization between capital markets in the region. Orderly capital account liberalization will be promoted with adequate safeguards against volatility and systemic risks. To expedite the process of financial services liberalization, ASEAN has agreed on a positive list modality and adopted milestones to facilitate negotiations. Currency cooperation would involve exploration of possible currency arrangements, including an ASEAN currency payment system for trade in local goods to reduce the demand for U.S. dollars and to help promote stability of regional currencies, such as by settling intra ASEAN trade using regional currencies. While in the offing of an ASEAN common currency, the leaders of the member states of ASEAN agreed in November 1999 to create the establishment of currency swaps and repurchase agreements as a credit line against future financial shocks. In May 2000, the finance minister of the ASEAN agreed through the Chiang Mai Initiative to plan for closer monetary and financial cooperation. The Chiang Mai Initiative (CMI) has two components: an expanded ASEAN swap arrangement (ASA) and a network of bilateral swap arrangements among ASEAN, China, Japan, and South Korea. The ASA preceded the 1997 financial crisis. 
It was originally established by the ASEAN Central Bank and monetary authorities of the five founding members of with a view to help countries meet temporary liquidity problems. An expanded ASA now includes all ten member states with an expanded facility of $1 billion. In recognition of the economic interdependence of East Asia, which has a combined foreign exchange reserves amounting to about $1 trillion, a network of bilateral swap arrangements and repurchase agreements among ASEAN, China, Japan and South Korea has been agreed upon. The supplementary facility aims to provide temporary financing for members which may be in balance of payments difficulties. In 2009, 16 bilateral swap arrangements (BSAs) have been successfully concluded with a combined amount of about $35.5 billion. The original CMI was signed on the 9th of December 2009, which took effect on the 20th of March 2014, while the amended version, the multilateralization of CMI (CMIM), was on the 17th of July 2014. It is a multilateral currency swap arrangement with a total size of $240 billion, governed by a single contractual agreement, while the CMI is a network of bilateral swap arrangements among the plus three and ASEAN countries' authorities. In addition, an independent regional surveillance unit called the ASEAN Plus Three Macroeconomic Research Office was established to monitor and analyze regional economies, and to support the CMIM decision making process. The amendments will effectively allow access of the ASEAN Plus 3 and Hong Kong to an enhanced CMIM package, which includes, among others, the doubling of the fund size from $120 billion to $240 billion, an increase in the level of access not linked to an international monetary fund program from 20% to 30%, and the introduction of a crisis prevention facility. These amendments are expected to fortify CMIM as the region's financial safety net in the event of any potential or actual liquidity difficulty. The AMRO will, during peacetime, conduct annual consultations with individual member economies and, on this basis, prepare quarterly consolidated reports on the macroeconomic assessment of the ASEAN Plus Three region and individual member countries. On the other hand, the AMRO will, during crisis time, prepare recommendations on any swap request based on its macroeconomic analysis of the swap requesting member and monitor the use and impact of funds once any swap request is approved. AMRO was officially incorporated as a company limited by guarantee in Singapore on 20 April 2011 and its office is at the Monetary Authority of Singapore Complex in Singapore. Governance of AMRO is being exercised by the Executive Committee (EC) and its operational direction by the Advisory Panel (AP). AMRO is currently headed by Dr. Yoichi Nomoto of Japan, who is serving his second two-year term until the 26th of May 2016. Stability in the financial system is a precondition to maintain the momentum of economic integration. In turn, the more ASEAN economies become integrated, the more feasible it is to adopt a single currency, which is expected to reinforce even further stability and integration. <inaudible> <inaudible> Food security ASEAN member states recognize the importance of strengthening food security to maintain stability and prosperity in the region. The World Food Summit of 1996 defined food security as existing, "...when all people at all times have access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food to maintain a healthy and active life." As ASEAN moves towards AEC and beyond, food security should be an integral part of the ASEAN community building agenda and deserves more attention. Part of the aim for ASEAN integration is to achieve food security collectively via trade in rice and maize. Trade facilitation measures and the harmonization, equivalency of food regulation and control standards will reduce the cost of trade in food products. While specialization and revealed comparative and competitive indices point to complementarities between trade patterns among the ASEAN member countries, intra-ASEAN trade in agriculture is quite small. However, integration could address this problem. The market project will provide flexible and demand-driven support to the ASEAN Secretariat, while bringing more private sector and civil society input into regional agriculture policy dialogue. By building an environment that reduces barriers to trade, ASEAN trade will increase, thereby decreasing the risk of another food price crisis. <laughs> Political Security Community Blueprint 
During the 14th ASEAN Summit, the group adopted the ASEAN Political Security Community Blueprint This document is aimed at creating a robust political security environment within ASEAN, with programs and activities outlined to establish the APSC by 2016. The document is based on the principles and purposes of the ASEAN Charter, the ASEAN Security Community Plan of Action, the Vientiane Action Programme, and other relevant decisions. The APSC aims to create a rules-based community of shared values and norms, a cohesive, peaceful, stable and resilient region with a shared responsibility toward comprehensive security and a dynamic and outward-looking region in an increasingly integrated and interdependent world. The ASEAN Defence Industry Collaboration was proposed at the 4th ASEAN Defence Ministers' Meeting on of May 2010 in Hanoi. The emergence of this concept was triggered by the fact that the majority of member states are regular importers of defence products. One of the purposes of this concept is to reduce defence imports from non-ASEAN countries by half i.e., from $25 billion down to $12.5 billion a year and to further develop the defence industry in the region. It was formally adopted during the 5th ASEAN Defence Ministers' Meeting on 19 May 2011, in Jakarta, Indonesia, in line with the ADMM Agreement to Enhance Security Cooperation in Maritime Security, Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Relief, Counter-Terrorism, and Military Medicine. The main focus is to industrially and technologically boost the security capability of ASEAN, consistent with the principles of flexibility and non-binding and voluntary participation among the member states. The concept revolves around education and capability building programs to develop the skills and capabilities of manpower, sharing in the production of capital for defense equipment, components, and spares, and the provision of repair and maintenance services to address all the defense and security needs of each ASEAN country. It also aims to develop the defence trade by encouraging member states to participate in the intra-ASEAN defence trade and support trade shows and exhibitions. ADIC aims to establish a strong defence industry relying on the local capabilities of each member state, and limit annual procurement from original equipment manufacturers outside the region. Countries like the USA, Germany, Russia, France, Italy, UK, China, South Korea, Israel, and the Netherlands are among the major suppliers to ASEAN. Military expenditures in ASEAN reached $35.5 billion in 2013 excluding Brunei and Myanmar, which surpassed the 2004 figure .4 billion by 147% and is expected to exceed $40 billion by 2016. Factors affecting the increase in military budget are economic growth, aging equipment, and the plan to strengthen the establishment of the defense industry. ASEANAPOL is also established to enhance cooperation on law enforcement and crime control among police forces of member states. However, there are challenges to the defense collaboration, namely the unequal level of capabilities among the member states in defense industry, and the lack of established defense trade among them. Prior to the adoption of the ADIC concept, the status of the defence industry base in each of the member states was at disparate level. Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand are among the top member states with an established defence industry base, but they possess different levels of capacity, while the remaining member states like the Philippines, Laos, Vietnam, Myanmar, and Cambodia have yet to develop and enhance their capabilities in this aspect. Of the ten member states, Indonesia and Singapore are among the most competitive players. Indonesia is the only member state recognized as one of the top 100 global defense suppliers from 2010 to 2013. ASEAN member states purchase virtually no defense products from within ASEAN. Singapore purchases products from Germany, France, and Israel. Malaysia purchased only 0.49% from ASEAN, Indonesia 0.1%, and Thailand 8.02%. The ASEAN Convention on Counter Terrorism serves as a framework for regional cooperation to counter, prevent, and suppress terrorism and deepen counter terrorism cooperation. It was signed by ASEAN leaders in 2007. On 28 April 2011, Brunei ratified the convention and a month later, the convention came into force. Malaysia became the 10th member state to ratify ACCT on the 11th of January 2013. Topic: <inaudible> Socio-cultural community blueprint. 
It was also during the 14th ASEAN Summit that the member governments of ASEAN adopted the ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community Blueprint The ASCC envisions an ASEAN community that is people-centered and socially responsible with a view to achieving enduring solidarity and unity among the countries and peoples of ASEAN by forging a common identity and building a caring and sharing society which is inclusive and harmonious where the well-being, livelihood, and welfare of the peoples are enhanced." Among its focus areas are, human development, social welfare and protection, social justice and rights, ensuring environmental sustainability, building the ASEAN identity, and narrowing the development gap. To track the progress of the AEC, the AEC Scorecard, a compliance tool was developed based on the EU Internal Market Scorecard. This scorecard is the only one in effect and is expected to serve as an unbiased assessment tool to measure the extent of integration among member states, and the economic health of the region. It is expected to provide relevant information about regional priorities, and thus foster productive, inclusive, and sustainable growth. Moreover, scores create incentives for improvement by highlighting what is working and what is not. It is also a compliance tool that makes it possible to monitor the implementation of ASEAN agreements, and the achievement of milestones indicated in the AEC strategic schedule. The scorecard outlines specific actions that must be undertaken by ASEAN collectively, and by its member states individually, to establish AEC by 2015. To date, two official scorecards have been published, one in 2010, and the other in 2012. According to the AEC Scorecard 2012, the implementation rates of AEC's four primary objectives, a single market and production base, b competitive economic region, c equitable economic development, and d integration into the global economy were 65.9%, 67.9%, 66.7%, and 85.7%, respectively, with 187 out of 277 measures being fully implemented by 2011. The scorecard is purely quantitative. It only examines whether a member state has performed the AEC task or not. The more yes answers, the higher the score, while Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand have eliminated 99.65% of their tariff lines, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam have decreased tariffs on 98.86% of their lines to the 0–5% tariff range in 2010, and are projected to eliminate tariffs on these goods by 2015, with the ability to do so for a few import duty lines until 2018. According to Lim Hng Kiang, Singapore's Minister for Trade and Industry, ASEAN was already the seventh largest economy in the world, and the third largest in Asia in 2013, estimated at $2.3 trillion. A recent study by Deloitte Touche Tomatsu Limited has projected that five of the top 15 manufacturing locations in the world will be in ASEAN by 2018. Furthermore, by 2050, ASEAN is also expected to be the fourth largest economy in the world after the European Union, the US, and China. The AEC envisions the free flow of overseas labor. However, receiving countries may require would be workers to take licensing examinations in those countries regardless of whether or not the worker has a professional license from their home country. Singapore is a major destination for skilled migrants from other ASEAN countries, mostly from Malaysia and the Philippines. Total employment in Singapore doubled between 1992 and 2008 from 1.5 million to 3 million, and the number of foreign workers almost tripled, from fewer than 400,000 to almost 1.1 million. High-skilled foreign talents customer service, nursing, engineering, it earn at least $2,000 a month and with a credential usually a college degree receive S passes, employment passes, including an EP-1 for those earning more than $7,000 a month, EP-2 for those earning $3,500, $7,000 a month, and EP-3 for those earning $2,500 minus $3,500 a month. In recent years, Singapore has been slowly cutting down the number of foreign workers to challenge companies to upgrade their hiring criteria and offer more jobs to local residents. The International Monetary Fund has warned that the Singapore policy of reducing the number of foreign workers could retard the country's economic growth and lower its competitiveness. Narrowing the Development Gap is the framework for addressing disparities among, and within, member states where pockets of underdevelopment exist. 
Under NDG, ASEAN has continued co-ordinating closely with other sub-regional cooperation frameworks e.g., BIMPEAGA, IMTGT, GMS, Mekong programs, viewing them as equal partners in the development of regional production and distribution networks in the AEC, and as a platform to mainstream social development issues in developing and implementing projects, in the context of the ASCC. The six-year initiative for ASEAN integration work plans have been developed to assist Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam as well as ASEAN's other sub-regions to ensure that the wheels of their economies move at an accelerated pace. The first IAI work plan was implemented from 2002 to 2008, prior to the development of the Roadmap for an ASEAN Community 2009 the second plan 2009 supports the goals of the ASEAN community and is composed of 182 prescribed actions, which includes studies, training programs, and policy implementation support, conducted through projects supported by older ASEAN member states, and ASEAN's dialogue partners and external parties. The IAI work plan is patterned after and supports the key program areas in the three ASEAN community blueprints, political security community, economic community, and socio-cultural community. The IAI task force, composed of representatives of the Committee of Permanent Representatives and its working group from all member states, is in charge of providing general advice and policy guidelines and directions in the design and implementation of the LAN. All member states are represented in the IAI task force, with the task force chaired by representatives of Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam. Chairmanship is rotated annually in alphabetical order by country name. The ASEAN Secretariat, in particular through the IAI and NDG division, supports the implementation and management of the IAI work plan and coordinates activities related to sub-regional frameworks. This includes servicing meetings, assisting in the formulation, implementation, monitoring and reporting of projects, resource mobilization, and overall operational coordination among various IAI and NDG-related stakeholders. The division works closely with the dialogue partners, and international agencies, to develop strategies and programs to assist in promoting and implementing IAI and NDG activities in ASEAN. ASEAN's planned integration has challenged its citizens to embrace a regional identity. The call for ASEAN identity delivers a challenge to construct dynamic institutions and foster sufficient amounts of social capital. The underlying assumption is that the creation of a regional identity is of special interest to ASEAN and the intent of the 2020 vision policy document was to reassert the belief in a regional framework designed as an action plan related to human development and civic empowerment. Accordingly, these assumptions will be the basis for recommendations and strategies in developing a participatory regional identity. Economy The group sought economic integration by creating the AEC by the end of 2015 that established a single market. The average economic growth of member states from 1989 to 2009 was between 3.8% and 7%. This was greater than the average growth of APEC, which was 2.8%. The ASEAN Free Trade Area (AFTA), established on the 28th of January 1992, includes a common effective preferential tariff (SEPT) to promote the free flow of goods between member states. ASEAN had only 6 members when it was signed. The new member states, Vietnam, Laos, Burma and Cambodia, have not fully met AFTA's obligations, but are officially considered part of the agreement as they were required to sign it upon entry into ASEAN and were given longer time frames to meet AFTA's tariff reduction obligations. The next steps are to create a single market and production base, a competitive economic region, a region of equitable economic development, and a region that is fully integrated into the global economy. Since 2007, ASEAN countries have gradually lowered their import duties to member states, with a target of zero import duties by 2016. ASEAN countries have many economic zones industrial parks, eco industrial parks, special economic zones, technology parks, and innovation districts. In 2015, UNIDO Vietnam United Nations Industrial Development Organization has compiled a list of economic zones in the ASEAN Economic Community in a report titled Economic Zones in the ASEAN", written by Arno Morrison. In 2018, eight of the ASEAN members are among the world's outperforming economies, with positive long-term prospect for the region. Topic: 
Topic: Internal market. By the end of 2015, ASEAN plans to establish a single market based upon the four freedoms. It will ensure free flow of goods, services, skilled labor, and capital. Until the end of 2010, intra-ASEAN trade was still low as trade involved mainly exports to countries outside the region, with the exception of Laos and Myanmar, whose foreign trade was ASEAN-oriented. In 2009, realized foreign direct investment (FDI) was $37.9 billion and increased twofold in 2010 to $75.8 billion. 22% of FDI came from the European Union, followed by ASEAN countries percent and by Japan and the United States. The ASEAN Framework Agreement on Trade in Services (AFAS) was adopted at the ASEAN Summit in Bangkok in December 1995. Under the agreement, member states enter into successive rounds of negotiations to liberalize trade in services with the aim of submitting increasingly higher levels of commitment. At present, ASEAN has concluded seven packages of commitments under AFAS. Mutual Recognition Agreements MRAs have been agreed upon by ASEAN for eight professions – physicians, dentists, nurses, architects, engineers, accountants, surveyors, and tourism professionals. Individuals in these professions will be free to work in any ASEAN states after the AEC goes into effect on 31 December 2015. In addition, six member states Malaysia, Vietnam two exchanges, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Singapore has collaborated on integrating their stock exchanges, which includes 70% of its transaction values with the goal to compete with international exchanges. Single market will also include the ASEAN Single Aviation Market ASEAN SAM, the region's aviation policy geared towards the development of a unified and single aviation market in Southeast Asia. It was proposed by the ASEAN Air Transport Working Group, supported by the ASEAN Senior Transport Officials Meeting, and endorsed by the ASEAN Transport Ministers. It is expected to liberalize air travel between member states allowing ASEAN airlines to benefit directly from the growth in air travel, and also free up tourism, trade, investment, and service flows. Since 1 December 2008, restrictions on the third and fourth freedoms of the air between capital cities of member states for air passenger services have been removed, while from 1 January 2009, full liberalization of air freight services in the region took effect. On 1 January 2011, full liberalization on fifth freedom traffic rights between all capital cities took effect. This policy supersedes existing unilateral, bilateral, and multilateral air services agreements among member states which are inconsistent with its provisions. Monetary union The concept of an Asian Currency Unit started in the middle of the 1990s, prior to the 1997 Asian financial crisis. It is a proposed basket of Asian currencies, similar to the European Currency Unit, which was the precursor of the euro. The Asian Development Bank is responsible for exploring the feasibility and construction of the basket. Since the ACU is being considered to be a precursor to a common currency, it has a dynamic outlook of the region. The overall goal of a common currency is to contribute to the financial stability of a regional economy, including price stability. It means lower cost of cross-border business through the elimination of currency risk. Greater flows of intra-trade would put pressure on prices, resulting in cheaper goods and services. Individuals benefit not only from the lowering of prices, they save by not having to change money when traveling, by being able to compare prices more readily, and by the reduced cost of transferring money across borders. However, there are conditions for a common currency, the intensity of intra-regional trade and the convergence of macroeconomic conditions. Substantial intra-ASEAN trade which is growing, partly as a result of the ASEAN Free Trade Area and the ASEAN Economic Community, and economic integration as an incentive for a monetary union. Member states currently trade more with other countries than among themselves Therefore, their economies are more concerned about currency stability against major international currencies, like the US dollar. On macroeconomic conditions, member states have different levels of economic development, capacity, and priorities that translate into different levels of interest and readiness. Monetary integration, however, implies less control over national monetary and fiscal policy to stimulate the economy. 
Therefore, greater convergence in macroeconomic conditions is being enacted to improve conditions and confidence in a common currency. Other concerns include weaknesses in the financial sectors, inadequacy of regional level resource pooling mechanisms and institutions required to form and manage a currency union, and lack of political preconditions for monetary cooperation and a common currency. Free trade Free trade initiatives in ASEAN are spearheaded by the implementation of the ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement and the Agreement on Customs. These agreements are supported by several sector bodies to plan and to execute free trade measures, guided by the provisions and the requirements of ATIGA and the Agreement on Customs. They form a backbone for achieving targets of the AEC blueprint and establishing the ASEAN Economic Community by the end of 2015. On 26 August 2007, ASEAN stated its aims of completing free trade agreements with China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia, and New Zealand by 2013, which is in line with the start of the ASEAN Economic Community by 2015. In November 2007, ASEAN states signed the ASEAN Charter, a constitution governing relations among member states and establishing the group itself as an international legal entity. During the same year, the Cebu Declaration on East Asian Energy Security was signed by ASEAN and the other members of the EAS Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea, which pursues energy security by finding energy alternatives to conventional fuels. On the 27th of February 2009, an FTA with Australia and New Zealand was signed. It is believed that this FTA would boost combined GDP across the 12 countries by more than $48 billion over the period between 2000 and 2020. Bilateral trade with India crossed the $70 billion target in 2012 target was to reach the level only by 2015. The agreement with China created the ASEAN-China Free Trade Area which went into full effect on 1 January 2010. In addition, ASEAN is currently negotiating an FTA with the European Union. Taiwan has also expressed interest in an agreement with ASEAN but needs to overcome diplomatic objections from China. ASEAN, together with its six major trading partners Australia, China, India, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea, began the first round of negotiations on 26–28 February 2013, in Bali, Indonesia on the establishment of the RCEP, which is an extension of ASEAN Plus 3 and 6 that covers 45% of the world's population and about a third of the world's total GDP. Tourism With the institutionalization of visa-free travel between ASEAN member states, intra-ASEAN travel has boomed. In 2010, 47% or 34 million out of 73 million tourists in ASEAN member states were from other ASEAN countries. Cooperation in tourism was formalized in 1976, following the formation of the Sub-Committee on Tourism under the ASEAN Committee on Trade and Tourism. The first ASEAN Tourism Forum was held on 18–26 October 1981 in Kuala Lumpur. In 1986, ASEAN Promotional Chapters for Tourism were established in Hong Kong, West Germany, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and North America. Tourism has been one of the key growth sectors in ASEAN and has proven resilient amid global economic challenges. The wide array of tourist attractions across the region drew 109 million tourists to ASEAN in 2015, up by 34% compared to 81 million tourists in 2011. As of 2012, tourism was estimated to account for 4.6% of ASEAN GDP—10.9% when taking into account all indirect contributions. It directly employed 9.3 million people, or 3.2% of total employment, and indirectly supported some 25 million jobs. In addition, the sector accounted for an estimated 8% of total capital investment in the region. In January 2012, ASEAN tourism ministers called for the development of a marketing strategy. The strategy represents the consensus of ASEAN National Tourism Organizations on marketing directions for ASEAN moving forward to 2015. 
In the 2013 Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index report, Singapore placed 1st, Malaysia placed 8th, Thailand placed 9th, Indonesia placed 12th, Brunei placed 13th, Vietnam placed 16th, Philippines placed 17th, and Cambodia placed 20th as the top destinations of travellers in the Asia-Pacific region. Foreign relations. ASEAN maintains a global network of alliances, dialogue partners and diplomatic missions, and is involved in numerous international affairs. The organization holds ASEAN summits, where heads of government of each member states meet to discuss and resolve regional issues, as well as to conduct other meetings with countries outside the bloc to promote external relations and deal with international affairs. The first summit was held in Bali in 1976. The third summit was in Manila in 1987, and during this meeting, it was decided that the leaders would meet every five years. The fourth meeting was held in Singapore in 1992 where the leaders decided to meet more frequently, every three years. In 2001, it was decided that the organization will meet annually to address urgent issues affecting the region. In December 2008, the ASEAN Charter came into force and with it, the ASEAN Summit will be held twice a year. The formal summit meets for three days, and usually includes internal organization meeting, a conference with foreign ministers of the ASEAN Regional Forum, an ASEAN Plus Three meeting and ASEAN CER, a meeting of member states with Australia and New Zealand. ASEAN is a major partner of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization developing cooperation model with the organization in the field of security, economy, finance, tourism, culture, environmental protection, development and sustainability. Additionally, the grouping has been closely aligned with China, cooperating across numerous areas, including economy, security, education, culture, technology, agriculture, human resource, society, development, investment, energy, transport, public health, tourism, media, environment, and sustainability. It is also the linchpin in the foreign policy of Australia and New Zealand, with the three sides being integrated into an essential alliance. ASEAN also participates in the East Asia Summit, a pan Asian forum held annually by the leaders of 18 countries in the East Asian region, with ASEAN in a leadership position. Initially, membership included all member states of ASEAN plus China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia, and New Zealand, but was expanded to include the United States and Russia at the 6th EAS in 2011. The first summit was held in Kuala Lumpur on 14 December 2005, and subsequent meetings have been held after the annual ASEAN Leaders Meeting. The summit has discussed issues including trade, energy, and security and the summit has a role in regional community building. Other meetings include the ASEAN Ministerial Meeting that focus mostly on specific topics, such as defence or the environment, and are attended by ministers. The ASEAN Regional Forum which met for the first time in 1994, fosters dialogue and consultation, and to promote confidence building and preventive diplomacy in the region. As of July 2007, it consists of 27 participants that include all ASEAN member states, Australia, Bangladesh, Canada, China, the EU, India, Japan, North and South Korea, Mongolia, New Zealand, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, Russia, East Timor, the United States, and Sri Lanka. Taiwan has been excluded since the establishment of the ARF, and issues regarding the Taiwan Strait are neither discussed at ARF meetings nor stated in the ARF chairman's statements. ASEAN also holds meetings with Europe during the Asia-Europe Meeting an informal dialogue process initiated in 1996 with the intention of strengthening cooperation between the countries of Europe and Asia, especially members of the European Union and ASEAN in particular. ASEAN, represented by its Secretariat, is one of the 45 ASEM partners. It also appoints a representative to sit on the governing board of Asia Europe Foundation a socio-cultural organization associated with the meeting. Annual bilateral meetings between ASEAN and India, Russia and the United States are also held. Environment At the turn of the 21st century, ASEAN began to discuss environmental agreements. These included the signing of the ASEAN Agreement on Transboundary Haze Pollution in 2002 as an attempt to control haze pollution in Southeast Asia, arguably the region's most high-profile environmental issue. 
Unfortunately, this was unsuccessful due to the outbreaks of haze in 2005, 2006, 2009, 2013, and 2015. As of 2015, 13 years after signing the ASEAN Agreement on Transboundary Haze Pollution, the situation with respect to the long-term issue of Southeast Asian haze has not been changed for 50% of the ASEAN member states, and still remains as a crisis every two years during summer and fall. Trash dumping from foreign countries such as Japan and Canada to ASEAN has yet to be discussed and resolved. Important issues include deforestation with Indonesia recorded the largest loss of forest in the region, more than other member states combined in the 2001–2013 period, plastic waste dumping five member states were among the top 10 out of 192 countries based on 2010 data, with Indonesia ranked as second worst polluter, threatened mammal species Indonesia ranked the worst in the region with 184 species under threat, threatened fish species Indonesia ranked the worst in the region, threatened higher plant species Malaysia ranked the worst in the region. Topic: <inaudible> Education. While high-performing Asian economies and the six oldest ASEAN member states have invested heavily in public education at the primary and secondary levels, tertiary education has been left largely to the private sector. Tertiary education in Southeast Asia is, in general, relatively weak in terms of technological capacity and integration such as in credit transfer schemes. Singapore and Malaysia is highly focused on innovation while the rest of the region lags behind. In most cases, universities are focused on teaching and service to government rather than academic research. Universities, both in terms of academic salaries and research infrastructure libraries, laboratories, tend to be poorly supported financially. Moreover, regional academic journals cater to their local audiences and respond less to international standards which makes universal or regional benchmarking difficult. Governments have a vested interest in investing in education and other aspects of human capital infrastructure, especially rapidly developing countries in the region. In the short run, investment spending directly supports aggregate demand and growth. In the longer term, investments in physical infrastructure, productivity enhancements, and provision of education and health services determine the potential for growth. To enhance regional cooperation in education, ASEAN education ministers have agreed four priorities for education promoting ASEAN awareness among ASEAN citizens, particularly youth, strengthening ASEAN identity through education, building ASEAN human resources in the field of education, strengthening the ASEAN university network. At the 11th ASEAN Summit in December 2005, leaders set new direction for regional education collaboration when they welcomed the decision of the ASEAN Education Ministers to convene meetings on a regular basis. The annual ASEAN Education Ministers meeting oversees cooperation efforts on education at the ministerial level. With regard to implementation, programs, and activities are carried out by the ASEAN Senior Officials on Education SOM ED also manages cooperation on higher education through the ASEAN University Network It is a consortium of Southeast Asian tertiary institutions of which 30 currently belong as participating universities. Founded in November 1995 by 11 universities, the ON was established to, promote cooperation among ASEAN scholars, academics, and scientists, develop academic and professional human resources, promote information dissemination among the ASEAN academic community, enhance awareness of a regional identity and the sense of ASEAN-ness among member states. The Southeast Asia Engineering Education Development Network project was established as an autonomous sub-network of ON in April 2001. It is aimed at promoting human resource development in engineering. The network consists of 26 member institutions selected by higher education ministries of each ASEAN member state, and 11 supporting Japanese universities selected by the Japanese government. This network is mainly supported by the Japanese government through the Japan International Cooperation Agency and partially supported by the ASEAN Foundation. SeedNet activities are implemented by the SeedNet Secretariat with the support of the JICA project for SeedNet now based at Chulalongkorn University. ASEAN has a scholarship program offered by Singapore to the nine other member states for secondary school, junior college, and university education. It covers accommodation, food, medical benefits and accident insurance, school fees, and examination fees. 
Its recipients, who then perform well on the GCE Advanced Level Examination, may apply for ASEAN undergraduate scholarships, which are tailored specifically to undergraduate institutions in Singapore and other ASEAN member countries. Singapore has used this program effectively to attract many of the best students from the ASEAN region over the past several years, and scholars for the most part tend to remain in Singapore to pursue undergraduate studies through the ASEAN Undergraduate Scholarship Program. Culture The organization hosts cultural activities in an attempt to further integrate the region. These include sports and educational activities as well as writing awards. Examples of these include the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, ASEAN Heritage Parks and the ASEAN Outstanding Scientist and Technologist Award. In addition, the ASEAN region has been recognized as one of the world's most diverse region ethnically, religiously and linguistically. Media Member states have promoted cooperation in information to help build an ASEAN identity. One of the main bodies in ASEAN cooperation in information is the ASEAN Committee on Culture and Information Established in 1978, its mission is to promote effective cooperation in the fields of information, as well as culture, through its various projects and activities. It includes representatives from national institutions like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministries of Culture and Information, national radio and television networks, museums, archives and libraries, among others. Together, they meet once a year to formulate and agree on projects to fulfill their mission. On 14 November 2014, foreign ministers of member states launched the ASEAN Communication Master Plan It provides a framework for communicating the character, structure, and overall vision of ASEAN and the ASEAN community to key audiences within the region and globally. The plan seeks to demonstrate the relevance and benefits of the ASEAN through fact-based and compelling communications, recognizing that the ASEAN community is unique and different from other country integration models. ASEAN Media Cooperation AMC sets digital television standards and policies in preparation for broadcasters to transition from analog to digital broadcasting. This collaboration was conceptualized during the 11th ASEAN Ministers Responsible for Information conference in Malaysia on 1 March 2012 where a consensus declared that both new and traditional media were keys to connecting ASEAN peoples and bridging cultural gaps in the region. Several key initiatives under the AMC include the ASEAN Media Portal was launched 16 November 2007. The portal aims to provide a one-stop site that contains documentaries, games, music videos, and multimedia clips on the culture, arts, and heritage of the ASEAN countries to showcase ASEAN culture and the capabilities of its media industry. The ASEAN Newsmaker Project, an initiative launched in 2009, trains students and teachers to produce informational video clips about their countries. The project was initiated by Singapore. Students trained in newsmaker software, video production, together with developing narrative storytelling skills. Dr. Song Rathchevi, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for ASEAN Socio-Cultural Community noted that, "...raising ASEAN awareness amongst the youth is part and parcel of our efforts to build the ASEAN community by 2015." Using ICT and the media, our youths in the region will get to know ASEAN better, deepening their understanding and appreciation of the cultures, social traditions and values in ASEAN." The ASEAN Digital Broadcasting Meeting, is an annual forum for ASEAN members to set digital television standards and policies, and to discuss progress in the implementation of the blueprint from analog to digital TV broadcasting by 2020. During the 11th ASEAN Digital Broadcasting Meeting members updated the status on DTV implementation and agreed to inform ASEAN members on the guidelines for ASEAN Digital Switchover. An issue was raised around the availability and affordability of set-top boxes STB, thus ASEAN members were asked to make policies to determine funding for STBs, methods of allocation, subsidies and rebates, and other methods for the allocation of STBs. It was also agreed in the meeting to form a task force to develop STB specifications for DVB-T2 to ensure efficiency. The ASEAN Post was launched on 8 August 2017 to commemorate ASEAN's 50th anniversary. 
It is an independent regional digital media company that is headquartered in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The focus of the company is to leverage off new technologies and future-proof the media landscape. It was founded by former investment banker Rohan Ramakrishnan. Music The ASEAN Way, the official regional anthem of ASEAN. Music by Kittakan Sadprasert and Sampau Triudam, lyrics by Payam Vilaifitra. ASEAN Song of Unity, or ASEAN Hymn. Music by Ryan Kayabyab. Let Us Move Ahead, an ASEAN song. Composed by Kandra Darusman. ASEAN Rise. ASEAN's 40th anniversary song. Music by Dick Lee, lyrics by Stephanie Sun. ASEAN Spirit, ASEAN's 50th anniversary song. Performed by Christian Bautista, directed by Joaquin Pedro Valdez. Sports Southeast Asian Games, ASEAN University Games ASEAN School Games ASEAN Para Games ASEAN Football Championship SEBA Championship Reception ASEAN has been credited as one of the world's most influential organizations, and a global powerhouse. The organization plays a prominent role in regional and international diplomacy, politics, economy and trade. The ASEAN Free Trade Area also stands as one of the largest and most important free trade areas in the world, and together with its network of dialogue partners, drove some of the world's largest multilateral forums and blocs, including Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, East Asia Summit and Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Being one of the world's forefront political, economic and security meetings, the ASEAN Summit serves as a prominent regional Asia and international worldwide conference, with world leaders attending its related summits and meetings to discuss about various problems and global issues, strengthening cooperation, and making decisions. However, despite its international success, recognition and influence, ASEAN still received several criticisms. Critics have charged that ASEAN is too soft in its approach to promoting human rights and democracy, particularly in Hunda-led Burma. Some scholars think that non-interference has hindered ASEAN efforts to handle the Burma issue, human rights abuse, and haze pollution in the area. Despite global outrage at the military crackdown on unarmed protesters in Yangon, ASEAN has refused to suspend Burma as a member, and also rejects proposals for economic sanctions. This has caused concern as the European Union has refused to conduct free trade negotiations at a regional level for these political reasons. During a UN vote against the ethnic cleansing of Rohingya, majority of member states voted to either abstain or against the condemnation. Only Muslim-majority countries Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei voted in favour of condemning the cleansing of Rohingya. Some international observers view ASEAN as a «talk shop», stating that the organisation is big on words, but small on action. ASEAN policies have proven to be mostly rhetoric, rather than actual implementation." According to Pakpong Lawansiri, a Bangkok-based independent analyst of ASEAN, "...it has been noted that less than 50% of ASEAN agreements are actually implemented, while ASEAN holds more than 600 meetings annually." The head of the International Institute of Strategic Studies, Tim Huxley, cites the diverse political systems present in the grouping, including many young states, as a barrier to far-reaching cooperation outside the economic sphere. He also asserts that, in the absence of an external threat to rally against with the end of the Cold War, ASEAN has begun to be less successful at restraining its members and resolving border disputes such as those between Burma and Thailand and Indonesia and Malaysia. During the 12th ASEAN summit in Cebu, several activist groups staged anti-globalization protests, arguing that the agenda of economic integration would negatively affect industries in the Philippines and would cause thousands of Filipinos to lose their jobs. Corruption remains a widespread issue as tea money remains an important requirement to grease business transactions and to receive public services. Following the release of the Corruption Perceptions Index 2015 by Berlin-based Graft Watchdog Transparency International on 27 January, its Asia-Pacific director, Srirak Plipat, noted that, 
If there was one common challenge to unite the Asia-Pacific region, it would be corruption." Noting that, from campaign pledges to media coverage to civil society forums, corruption dominates the discussion. Yet despite all this talk, there's little sign of action. Topic economic integration The group's integration plan has raised concerns, in particular, the 2015 deadline. Business and economy experts who attended the LIPO UPH dialogue in Naypyidaw cited unresolved issues relating to aviation, agriculture, and human resources. Some panelists, among them, Kishore Mabubani, warned against high expectations at the onset. He stated, please do not expect a Big Bang event in 2015 where everything is going to happen overnight when the ASEAN economic community comes into being. We've made progress in some areas and unfortunately regressed in some areas. Some panelists enumerated other matters to be dealt with for a successful launch. Among them were the communications issues involving the 600 million citizens living in the region, creating a heightened level of understanding in the business sector, current visa arrangements, demand for specific skills, banking connections, and economic differences. Former Philippine National Statistical Coordination Board Secretary General Romulo A. Varola, said in 2012 that the Philippines does not appear to be ready to benefit from the integration due to its wobbly economic performance compared to other member states. According to Varola, the Philippines continues to lag behind in terms of employment rate, tourism, life expectancy, and cellular subscriptions. Nestor Tan, head of BDO Unibank Inc., said that while some businesses see the Asian Economic Blueprint as an opportunity, the integration would be more of a threat to local firms. Tan added that protecting the Philippines' agricultural and financial services sectors, as well as the labor sector, would be necessary for the implementation of AEC by 2015. Standard & Poor's also believed that banks in the Philippines are not yet prepared for the tougher competition that would result from the integration. In one of its latest publications, S&P said banks in the country, although profitable and stable, operate on a much smaller scale than their counterparts in the region. The US Chamber of Commerce has highlighted widespread concern that the much anticipated AEC could not be launched by the 2015 deadline. In January 2014, former ASEAN Secretary General Rodolfo C. Severino wrote While ASEAN should not be condemned for its members' failure to make good on their commitments, any failure to deliver will likely lead to a loss of credibility and could mean that member states fall further behind in the global competition for export markets and foreign direct investment. This is not the first time that AEC faces a probable delay. In 2012, the commencement of the AEC was postponed to 31 December 2015 from the original plan of 1 January. Despite Secretary-General Surin Pitsuan's firm reassurance that t here will be no more delays and that all ten ASEAN countries will participate, even the most fervent proponents of AEC worried that AEC would not be delivered on time as December 2015 neared. An article published by Vietnam News echoed some of the challenges and opportunities that Vietnam faces in preparation for the AEC. The article said that the deputy head of the Import-Export Department under the Ministry of Industry and Trade, Tran Thanh Hai, was concerned about local enterprises' lack of knowledge of the AEC. It was said that 80% of local enterprises surveyed acknowledged that they have little information about the interests and challenges available for them in the ASEAN market. The article also noted that the General Secretary of the Vietnam Steel Association, Chu Duc Cai, said that most of the local steel making enterprises lack information about doing business in the ASEAN market, they have not had a chance to study it, and have only exported small amounts of steel to ASEAN countries. Another challenge is the need to compete with other countries in the ASEAN market to export raw products since the country had mainly exported raw products. The Asian Development Bank also has doubts about Cambodia's ability to meet the AEC deadline. The leading economist of ADB, Jayant Menon, said that Cambodia needs to speed up its customs reform and to press ahead with automating processes to reduce trade costs and minimize the opportunities for corruption and be ready for the implementation of its national single window by 2015. Topic: <laughs> Territorial disputes. Several territorial disputes has affected the unity of ASEAN such as the Cambodian-Thai border dispute between Cambodia and Thailand, the North Borneo dispute between the Philippines and Malaysia, and the South China Sea dispute which includes Vietnam, Brunei, the Philippines, Malaysia, and possibly Indonesia.
equals equals see also